So you might remember that not too long ago, I got my first dual uh, dual extruder 3D printer, the QD iFast. Now this gave me the ability to print models that before were pretty much impossible, especially on the Fan Showdown. It, um, it basically opened the door for crazier and crazier designs because we could use PVA support material. Now, if you don't know, PVA or polyvinyl alcohol is a material for 3D printers that's mostly used for um, support material because it is dissolvable in water and it pairs really well with PLA. Overall, I'm gonna be honest, I, I really actually love the iFast. It, it prints really well, it can use PVA, it can do different or multicolor if you want to. Um, the only real gripe I have with it is it doesn't have automatic bed leveling yet. I did talk to QD and they said that they are working on integrating automatic bed leveling into the iFast, which I really can't wait for. But even without it, it's, it's still a very, very capable 3D printer. Now the keen-eyed among you might notice that the Ender 7 is missing back there and there is an unidentified printer in the background. This is the QD XCF Pro. And yes, it's another QD 3D printer. That's the iFast. This is the new XCF Pro. And this printer was specifically... Easy, big fella. This printer was specifically designed to print in carbon fiber nylon. However, although this printer was designed to specifically print in carbon fiber nylon, it prints really well in all of your other favorite, you know, materials like PLA, ABS, PETG. And I'm gonna be honest, I haven't even tried carbon fiber nylon in this yet. I've just done a little bit of test printing with PLA. I just finished printing, of course, a fan. And uh, I thought, you know, we'll try the carbon fiber nylon together to see how that goes. But out of the box, so far this thing has been doing a fantastic job. The build volume of the printer is 300 by 250 by 300 with an overall printer size of 610 by 515 by 678 and it weighs a pretty hefty 28 kilograms. <laughs> Setting up the printer uh, doesn't get much easier. You pull it out of the box, you remove some packaging material, you plug it in, you level the bed and you're pretty much good to go if you want to print in carbon fiber nylon or any high temperature material. Now, if you don't, and you wanna print in some PLA or an ABS or a PETG, you're gonna to have to swap out the extruder. The printer comes with two hot ends. It comes with a high temperature hot end, and it comes with a lower temperature hot end that we've been talking about. Both of these hot ends have direct drive dual gear extruders, and the recommended maximum temperature for the high temperature hot end is 350C, and the recommended maximum temperature for the standard hot end is 250C. Now, both of these hot ends come with 0.4 millimeter nozzles already installed. Uh, the, the high temperature one obviously has a hardened nozzle. The standard one has a brass nozzle and you get one of each type as a spare with the printer. The build plate is a flexible spring steel and it's coated with PEI and it's magnetically attached to the heated build plate or the heated build surface. And you also get a spare build plate with the printer too. So you get two build surfaces or build plates, which is pretty nice. The maximum build surface temperature is 120 C and the printer is also equipped with a filament runout sensor, HEPA air filter and Wi-Fi. The XCF Pro does come with automatic bed leveling via an integrated BL touch in the, the hot end. Now you'll notice that this one doesn't have a BL touch. Although you get two extruders or hot ends with this printer, you only get one BL touch. So when you swap out your hot end, you also have to move over your BL touch, which not ideal, but it's not, it's not a huge pain, I guess you'd say. It just bolts right in the bottom, plugs right into the extruder itself. The XCF Pro's main board is built around the Cortex M4 CPU paired with the TMC 2209 drivers, and then that's matched with a five inch touchscreen display down here at the bottom. Now the CX Pro obviously is an enclosed printer, but there is no heater for the build chamber. The temperature of the chamber is driven basically just by the heated build plate and the hot end. The frame of the XCF Pro is extremely rigid and all of the axes have linear guide rails, which is really nice. And you also get dual ball screws for the Z axis. And at the back, you'll notice you have two limit switches to make sure that the, the build plate is as level as possible before you run the automatic leveling program. The slicing software provided with this printer is called QD Print. It's very similar to Cura and it has profiles for all their printers and all the material types already pre-installed, which makes it very nice. All of these prints that we're gonna look at in PLA were made with their PLA profile with pretty much no change. Um, I think I just added a support interface and that's about it. So the very first thing I printed was a calibration cube and I normally always print a calibration cube first just to see how the walls look, see if there's any ringing and for the most part, this looks really, really good. The, the size too should be 20 by 20 by 20 and it's pretty much right in there. It's, it's a little wide on the sides, which is pretty typical, but the Z height is pretty much spot on. Then of course we got to print a boat and the, this Benchy came out very good. Maybe a little bit of a cooling issue on the front bow there. The cooling fan 
doesn't look to be the best, but you know, really not too bad. There's no stringing. All the layers look pretty nice, so pretty decent benchy. And then I always like to print some of these print in place objects, the little octopus, the shark, and the slug. The slug can be pretty, pretty difficult, but it everything came out good. All the joints work, nothing stuck. Even the shark's little mouth opens up, which sometimes can be a problem as well. And I'm on honestly, I'm very impressed with how well all of these prints came off the printer right out of the box with the PLA profile that QD provides on their slicing software. After the print and place joints and stuff, I wanted to see a vase mode. So this is the dragon capsule with the trunk and it's printed in vase mode. You can see at the top, it got a little hairy where the overhang was a little too much for it. But again, very clean, very good adhesion between the layers. There's nothing that's really splitting. It, uh, it's, it's, I'm gonna say very impressed. And then I printed the same model with a, a more standard profile. So this is just a 20% or 15% infill. Same issue on the top. It's a little, could have probably used a higher infill density to make sure that didn't happen. But I mean, I was pretty impressed with it. And then the last thing, one of the last things I printed was the Millennium Falcon. Uh, and this is basically a no support model. So it prints standing up like this. And the detail on the cockpit came out really well. You can see all the guns. You can see right through the ship and it didn't fall off the build plate. It stayed attached just like that and printed very, very cleanly. And of course it couldn't be major hardware without printing a fan. This actually just finished and it came out really clean. Now it's a pretty basic and simple fan. I just want to see how it would do with no support material, how the layers would all line up and pretty impressed. Also, I figured we could print the same fan in nylon and maybe even some TPU and see exactly you know, could there be a difference between all these different material types and performance? So it's going to be obviously the same exact fan as we just printed in PLA, obviously TPU this time around. I'll make sure to orient it the same exact way and hopefully it'll come out nice and squishy. <laughs> 0.2 millimeter layer height, same as before. And I will say I took the time to set up the Wi-Fi, and I do actually like it. It looks pretty good. Well, it looks like it came out pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. This is the first Thing I've ever printed in flexible so I wasn't really sure to what to expect but seemed to print just the same as anything else took a little bit longer obviously it was slowed down to make sure it printed well but <laughs> so that's pretty cool so now we got PLA TPU and now we're gonna we're, all, we're also gonna make one in carbon fiber nylon and to do that we got to re replace the hot end so i'll kind of show you how that process works it's pretty straightforward not that not that tough and then hopefully it'll print just as good as it did the tpu that actually came out really well first thing we're going to do is remove these four thumb screws after that this cover can come off now we're going to take off this little ribbon cable here then there's five screws that hold this hot end onto the carriage so we'll just loosen those up the hot end will come off and we pretty much do the complete opposite to put the new one on other than we're gonna have to take the BL touch off put it on the new hot end so you can see the BL touch is mounted with two screws into onto the housing and then the wires just run up here and they plug in right to this little daughter board up top and on the other extruder you see set up the same way mounting holes are there for the BL touch and the two points to plug it in are exactly the same now, because this printer was designed to print nylon, it does come with a dry box and a mount. So when you set it up for nylon or carbon fiber nylon, you can put your spool that you're printing off of in a dry box to keep as much humidity out of it as possible. So we have our three fans. Math is hard. This is four, I guess. We'll, we'll I'll talk to you a little bit about that. First, the PLA one. We've made enough PLA uh, computer fans at this point that we got that pretty much unlocked. The printer did great. Everything looks looks fine no supports on this model everything's looks good uh nothing to say about that tpu on the other hand i have never actually printed anything in my life with tpu up until now and this stuff is actually really cool <laughs> there's just something weird about taking a fan and just kind of smashing it or anything really you print and it comes right back and it's very interesting the settings the, the profile that was pre-loaded for tpu did really well i don't know about you, but it looks pretty much flawless to my eye. I don't know how it's gonna work as a fan. We'll we'll get to that in a minute. I don't know if these these blades being all <laughs> squishy, bendy is gonna make a problem. But I don't know. Now to the nylon. This is my first one. It came out 
uh, looked like I might have been a little too close on my first layer, which uh, gave me a little bit of problems. And I did start to notice a little bit of curling on the blades. They're very thin. Um, didn't look like the nylon liked it too much. So I reprinted it, this time with the raft, which is basically like cheat mode when you can't get things to stick properly. And it came out uh, reasonably well. The only really issue I notice is, seems like we have a little bit of a cooling issue on these really thin fan blades where they, they wanted to, I don't know, kind of ripple up like that. I, I could probably do some tweaking, but again, didn't want to do any tuning or anything. This is just a stock profile. The hub area where it's a, a thicker material came out like pretty much perfect. And I will say, I've heard horror stories of nylon in the past. This was pretty easy. I just wouldn't say it's any more difficult than these two other than getting it to stick. But like I said, just to use a little bit of a raft and it was good to go. Next though, do you think any of these fans, they're essentially the same model, just change the material type in the profile, hit print again. Do you think they all weigh the same? First one we got is the PLA. Looks like 12.3 grams. Next one, TPU, 11.7, .7, so a little lighter. I actually would have thought that would be maybe heavier. And the carbon fiber nylon, 10.6. So this is actually the lightest, kind of expected. I'm really confused why the TPU is lighter, but anyway. So by weight, we got heaviest in the middle, lightest. PLA, TPU, carbon fiber nylon. Now does that affect RPM? I don't know, let's find out. Also we'll find out if this even works. So the first question is, will the flexible nature of the TPU mean that as it spins, the blades maybe stretch and hit the hit the frame? I guess we'll find out. Seems to work just the same as everything else. Sounds the same. Let's see what the RPM is. Right around 17, 17.35, 35-ish, yeah, we'll call it 17.35. PLA looks to be right around 17.30. Carbon fiber nylon, we can call it, looks like 17, oh, oh, 17, 15. So RPM wise, you can pretty much say they are pretty much all the same. I mean, they are, there's a little bit of a difference there, but nothing too drastic. And they all sound pretty much the same with the exception of the TPU fan or the flexible fan. Now, initially when you turn it on, it sounds just like the other ones, but as you let it run, you'll notice a progressive louder and louder sound. Now I don't have a good enough high speed camera to kind of see what's going on. If I was to guess though, I would say that these little tiny wing tips or these uh, winglets on the end of these fan blades, as the fan spins around and around and around, they slowly succumb to centripetal force and slowly start touching the fan frame. As you, as you can hear, it kind of gets louder and louder and louder. So that's the only difference between all the fans sound wise. Let's see if they all perform reasonably the same in the wind tunnel test. The only one probably being different would be the flexible fan as it slows down as it starts to hit the frame. First one up is the PLA one. It's gonna be like our baseline, so we'll see what it levels off at. Let's call it 650. Okay, now for our flexible fan. Is that still on? Yes, sir. Interesting. So you can definitely hear that it's rubbing pretty good now, but it is doing better at 660. Interesting. I also love this one too, because it's so much easier to take off. <laughs> now for our carbon fiber boy. Yeah, it looks like we can call that probably 650, 650, 652, 655. We'll stick with 655. So that's interesting. The, I mean, the differences between the two are negligible at best. I mean, there's really no difference, but the TPU fan did do the best. And that's weird to me because I would, one, I thought this would be the heaviest just by feeling it, which it's not. I also thought it would be the worst because you can definitely hear that it's touching the fan shroud maybe that's making it more efficient i don't know but it definitely the tpu fan surprised me and i still love the fact that i can just crush it tpu is pretty cool i might have to print that more often going back to the xcf pro from cutie is it a good printer yeah i mean i liked the ifas i still love the ifas i knew that the xcf pro was going to be just as good because it has basically everything the ifas does minus you know it only has one head but it does have automatic bed leveling which is the only thing i really didn't like about the ifas and hopefully that's fixed soon. Now the big claim to fame with the XCF Pro is nylon, the carbon fiber nylon specifically, and does it print it well? I'd say yes, I mean, I have never printed nylon before and I didn't find it difficult at all. Now, obviously nylon's not the 
hardest filament out there to print, but as somebody that's never done it before and you hear all the horror stories about it doesn't stick, it likes to fold or flop or peel or any other weird words I can think of, I didn't have that bad of an experience, especially when I used a raft to cheat my way through it. And it did a reasonably decent job given how thin it was. PLA with the other head did just fine and TPU, I, I still can't find any fault with it. And I'm sure all the other profiles they have preloaded on their slicing software work just as good. Now, is it a printer you should buy? That's, you know, that's where it gets a little tricky. The, the XDF Pro is $2,000, which is a bit of, it's a lot of money, let's be honest. If you're gonna buy a printer, you can get a, a Mark III S a lot cheaper that could arguably do the same stuff as long as you, you know, configure the hot end correctly. Um, but, you know, you also get two printing heads. You get a whole setup that's ready to go for printing nylon. You get all the profiles loaded with their slicing software. So as an out of the box, easy industrial printer, I think the XCF Pro is great. And anybody that's running like a small business, or maybe you'd have, you maybe want to do a little bit of prototyping work at work, that would be a great, you know, printer for it. Is it a printer you should get if it's your first printer? I would say no, mostly because the printer itself is designed to print carbon fiber nylon, nylon specifically. It's set up, it's got everything you need to make sure it stays dry and prints well. It does come with the head necessary to print the lower temperature material, but I don't think it's worth your money to buy this printer and then not use it for printing nylon and stuff like that. When you can get much cheaper options out there for getting into 3D printing. If you wanna get onto that later down the road when you wanna start printing, carbon fiber nylon or nylon or any of the higher temperature material, I think it's a great printer for it. It has all the features you need. It's got the Wi-Fi, the automatic bed leveling, the good build quality, plus all the prints that I've printed off this thing have been flawless, haven't had any issues, no failures yet. It's a good printer in my eyes. A little expensive is the only downside I'd say. So thank you all for watching. If you want to see me print some more TPU stuff, I don't know, give me some ideas in the comments down below. Carbon fiber, I got a little bit left of this nylon stuff. If, uh, if you want me to do some of that, maybe we can test how strong it is by just creating something to spin it as fast as possible. We've done that in the past. We've spun fans with quad motors at max speeds. I wonder if nylon could stick up. You would think. I don't know. Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe. We'll see you in the next video.